I'm going to teach you how to kill people in game, okay? Starting off, let me actually show you the video. He renamed the title of this video. This originally was called uh, Game Census for the Week, but pretty much what I'm borrowing from this from this YouTuber, if you don't have good aim, you're not going to build good game sense because essentially, one, you're going to rule out any 50-50 duels as like a good play because you, you, you're not going to win that duel if you have bad aim. And then the other aspect, you're not going to build up game sense fast because you're scared to like go out of your comfort zone and limit test on like what you're actually capable of. And if you want to learn faster, you need to just make a bunch of mistakes and like limit test yourself, you know, just take fights, take fights, take fights and see what you should and shouldn't do. And so essentially, if you have bad aim, you're going to learn to be a very passive and just like weak player when it comes to just being ag aggressive when needed or like taking fights when needed. You're just going to learn to be very passive and it's not proper way to play. That's kind of like the route I was unintentionally sent down by myself because I just could never kill people. Right. That's why I became an IGL. That's why I like queue with a bunch of friends so I can like manipulate these things and not have to duel people to win, you know, but I realized this is a weak point of mine. I got to fix it. So starting off, I just want to mention that. Okay. Uh, game sense is for the weak, just like what that guy previously titled his video. You need to have good aim in order to have good aim, game sense because good aim builds good game sense. Okay. Dueling tips when it comes to getting into a duel with someone. I have listed it out into three categories of things I want to discuss. Tips for dueling, tips for practice, and then general tips for both. Most of the tips for the dueling that I'm going to continue with is going to be all like movement based stuff. And just you gotta think about your your movement as like dribbling, like if you're basketball, like you, you gotta have your dribbles, you gotta have your moves, like between the legs, behind the back, like you gotta make it where it's like hard to get the ball from you. Same way you gotta make it where it's hard for the other guy to hit his, his shot. And just like basketball, you have your shot, but your shot isn't your dribbles. Like they're two different things. You got your movement and then your shot. Same in CS, you got your movement and then your shot. And if you have just a good shot, but bad movement, you're such an easy target to hit. Someone with bad aim is gonna fuck you up like nine times out of 10. Not having your counter stripes down like perfectly is gonna fuck up your aim. You're gonna like be on their head and just not hit the shot because you're still moving and you won't be accurate. So it seems like such a simple thing, but I was still even making the mistake, what, 7,000 hours in the game? So make sure you get that shit down, okay? Uh, next up, when it comes to the actual duel itself, you want to vary your peaks, okay? Learn all the peaks and learn when to use them and just switch it up. Don't do the same thing every single time over and over. When it, next, when it comes up to dueling is like, I've discussed this in the first video of aim training, but it's like learning different techniques for shooting. Obviously you can spray if you're like up close, you know, it's full, full spray. You wanna probably like burst when you're like kind of medium range and then you wanna tap and MBM method when you're like far away. Uh, learn the different techniques for playing and then practice switching between them because you, you're not gonna be spraying all the time. Like you're not, anything past like party, if you miss that first couple shots, move and burst again. Don't commit to sprays past medium range. Uh, next up, when it comes to duels, another tip I realized is when it comes to insta flicking, right? So when you're normally aiming, you want to flick and then micro adjust on the target and then shoot, flick, sh adjust, shoot, flick, adjust, shoot. But when you're close range in game, you want to insta flick spray and then let your other bullets be the micro adjust. It's all about getting off the first shot and hitting the first shot. Uh, a mistake a lot of people make close range is that like they'll be so used to like, let's say being super accurate, flick, micro adjust, flick, micro adjust, flick, micro adjust, and they'll be close range and they'll try to do that flick, micro adjust, and then shoot. You're too slow. You're close range, just fucking insta flick. You'll likely hit the shot on the insta flick and then let your spray be the micro adjust. Don't be trying to flick, micro adjust everything. On the flip side, don't be doing this when it comes to targets long range, you should not be insta flicking and spraying targets long range. You should be doing the technique I was talking about earlier, bursting, moving, bursting, moving. See what I'm saying? There's a time and place for everything. So another thing too, during the long flick of your shot, right? If I was to like, have to shoot the guy party, the long flick right here, I should not be standing still. You should move during your long flick and stop for the micro adjust. It just makes yourself a harder target to hit. So a way you can practice this, if you have refrag, if you go to their crossfire game mode, this is a drill I've been doing on my own. If someone peeks you, your first reaction, it should be to move and then shoot. Move, flick, and shoot. You shouldn't stand still and flick and take the shot. There's no point in standing still while flicking. You're easy to hit. So might as well, during that dead time of the, the initial flick, you should be moving. Uh, this is just like a, a, a little dual movement tip that I kind of like been working on, like a technique 
a lot of times when they're on far range against the target, right? Let's say there's a target right here. When I'm far range, I'll instantly, I'll instantly resort to like crouch spam tapping, which is not necessarily wrong, but there's like a, there's low key a better way to tap at distance. If you're in a long range fight, it, that, it just makes you a really hard target to hit, but it's kind of hard to master. It's just going back and forth like this. And this took me a couple days to actually master. But if you can master this movement, it makes you way harder to hit at long range and you're just as accurate. Now, the one time I would say, if we want to get like technical, like the one time you should be like crouch spam tapping is if you're in a long range fight and the guy's like in a headshot angle because you kind of need that extra accuracy. But if you guys are both standing, right? If we're both in the open like this and I go to do the crouch spam, that's such an easy shot for him to hit. You're better off doing this type of uh, tapping. I guess I just wrote this as a quote. The flashiness will come naturally, okay? When you see pros and they're in a game and like some guy peeks them along and he does like the insta flick and one taps the dude, he's not doing it to be cool. He's not doing it to be flashy. He's doing it because that's the best technique for the situation, right? At long range, you wanna do the insta flick and then start tapping after. So you take the gamble on the, like the MBM method that I talked about in the first video. You do the insta flick and then you start tapping after. And when pros do that, people will see that and be like, oh, I should aim like that all the time. Not true. He's just doing that because it's the best technique for the scenario given. The quick wrap up for the dueling tips when it comes to like transferring aim in the game, just know that most of the dueling is not aim in itself. Most of the dueling is picking the right aim technique for the fight, having good complementary movement, and then third, playing around cover. And then like just knowing when to do each reflexively, which you can, can be trained during crossfire or DM or something. Just learning each of the aim techniques, each of the movement techniques, mixing and matching all of them up, whatever is necessary, playing around your cover and just being a hard target to hit. Most of the dueling is not just aim. Now, when it comes to practicing this stuff, I'm just gonna quick go over, go over some quick, quick general routines you can do. And I'm gonna go into like specifics on how to practice certain things, okay? So starting off with general routines you can do to improve your aim. Let me find this video. Here we go. This video right here, look up this video if you want to get the aim routine I'm about to show you. But this is a good way to practice just in-game aim and dueling. Uh, I'll show you in a second. So this is the first way to practice if you don't have any money for refrag or Kovacs or anything along those lines. Uh, you could do this. These bots that you play against are like extremely evasive when they peek you like they always like wide swing shit and they're also extremely reactive like they insta shoot you when you peek so this could help you help teach you how to play against peeking targets when they swing you on that corner and also teach you how to play against evasive targets and how to tap against evasive moving targets one thing that is, is really good at teaching you to do that i've noticed the bot since they react instantly it teaches you to not uh freak out when you're getting shot at. It teaches you to kind of like take your time and do your own pace during the shot and not just like freak out and just try and insta flick because you're, you just got shot. I noticed that as soon as I get shot, I freak the fuck out and just start spraying and hope I kill the other guy because I think I'm about to die. But if you get shot and you're not dead yet, likely you're not gonna get shot in the head again because the guy's mid spray and he's gonna be inaccurate. So you still have time to adjust onto their head. It gives you the confidence to like continue with whatever aim you're about to do, flick, micro dress on the head and still kill the guy because he's, if he's shooting in the body, he's likely not going to shoot you in the head in the next shot. So that's the first way to practice, just generally. The next way to practice is obviously... Huh? Kovacs. And a problem with Kovacs, which is like my issue, is that a lot of the scenarios that you will be playing in Kovacs are all multi-targeted. Because when you're in-game, the stuff is usually never multi-targeted. It's always one target. Pops up, you have to react and shoot. And this is a whole different type of aim. Doing the West Proter technique, all these like scenarios is really good. It's really good, but you have to put it all together into your one flick, your one reactionary aim. And so I made this playlist. I call it Dirty Dan. Shout out Dirty Dan, because a lot of the scenarios in here are some that he made. And this whole uh, playlist is just all one target reflexive stuff. If you want this playlist, this is the code right here for the playlist right there. I could put it in the description of the video when I make this. So. The next good way to practice, if you have money, I would say get refrag. This is like pretty much all I've been doing lately. And if you do their normal game mode of crossfire and you don't adjust the bots at all, they will have like a 1.5 second reaction time. See how it's kind of long. And this is fine if you want to train like your sprays because you'll have enough time to do sprays and spray transfers and stuff. But this can, if you only do this, it'll get you in a bad habit of like 
being slow in your fights because you have so long to react to the bot. So a good way to train your reflexive aim in Crossfire is to go to the menu and then you set it so there's only one bot and then you set the reaction time to like 0.7 to like 0.3-ish seconds. You want to work your way down the reaction time, make it harder and harder as you play. And that will just get you used to like, like watch, like the reflexive aim. Like you had to react or else you die, right? See how fast that guy reacts? If you do this, I recommend going as fast as you can while being able to maintain good good aim form. You don't want to be like insta-flicking everything. You want to be able to still flick and micro-adjust and hit the target because that should be your natural aim form is the flick and micro-adjust. You just have to make it faster and faster. You don't want to have to like insta-flick all your targets because you're not fast enough. You should be able to flick, micro-adjust, and then shoot. So another general tip for aim training when you're in Kovacs is to train doubling your sense and with normal your sense and maybe sometimes with half your sense if you're like a really if you're on a really high sense but training with different sensitivities forces you to use different muscles in your arm to aim so right if you're on a really high sense you could probably track these targets like across the whole map with just your wrist which i don't recommend anyone should be at that high of a sense but if you're on a really slow sense like me this is like a 180 is like my whole mouse pad right so when i'm playing against these targets and i'm tracking these targets it's all arm aim and if you want to train you know for cs most of the fights you're taking are not arm aim most of your fights that you're taking are like this most of your fights that you take in cs are really small areas of targets so you want to train a lot of like your fingertip and wrist aim which you can do in these different scenarios that like take up the whole map and stuff you can still train your fingertip and wrist like let's go to here right if i were to do this it's a lot of arm aim but tracking but if i were to just double my sense now i'm using my wrist to track this target which will transfer over in game when i get to those small area targets and i have to use my wrist and fingertips to track flick acquire the target all that stuff so don't be scared to change your sense it's not going to fuck up your aim it's actually only going to improve it and just learn to play with double your sense in certain scenarios i should i would not recommend doing it all the time especially when you're doing like reflexive scenarios i would say stay at your normal sense when you're at like when you're training reflexively but when you're training like aspects of your aim tracking precision acquisition all these other things i would say i would recommend to doing it with normal your sense and then also doing it with double your sense to work on your fingertip and wrist aim some other things i've learned in general for aiming is what i would refer to as screenshotting your fights and so what i mean by screenshotting your duels screenshotting your fights Sometimes when you go to pre-fire an angle, you can't pre-aim all the angles in there. So it's best to just peek and like you take a screenshot of all the targets there and then you flick to them, right? A lot of times when you're pre-firing, you're not going to be perfectly accurate. And I would do pre-fire practice and think that if I wasn't perfectly on the head when I pre-fired, I'd just be like this, that I'm doing something wrong. But that's not what pre-fire is for. It's teaching you how to like be really close and then to adjust when necessary, right? But sometimes like right here, the bot can spawn here here or under the porch and sometimes you just you just have to peek all the angles right you peek this one and that one and then you just react to wherever it's the bots at another thing to practice as well you can do this in pre-fire you can do this in crossfire you can also do this in aim bots is learning to commit to targets right so right there i missed the first couple of shots but i committed to the target till it was dead a lot of times when you only do kovacs or only do aim bots you build up this bad habit of flick miss flick shoot like you're just constantly switching targets right you're constantly moving from target to target like you're constantly switching targets and if you miss you just keep moving but in game you don't want to do that you want to commit to your targets so good thing to do in pre-fire or uh, crossfire is learning to like when you see a target if you miss learn how to commit to that target see i missed like the first three shots but i, I committed to the target and this will help you transfer over your aim in game when you end up like missing the first shot So this is a this is a weird quirky thing that I had turned off for like three years and it fucked up the development of my spray control and my aim as well. Uh, you want draw tracers first person to one. You don't want this turned off. If you have this turned off, you don't have tracers when you shoot. And these tracers pretty much tell you where you're missing at, right? If you're shooting at a target with no backdrop, like if you're on vert, like say a target was up on the coffins and I'm shooting at him, I don't see where my bullets are going 
It gives you feedback on where you're like fucking up in your aim. I had this turned off forever where I'd only get feedback if I saw the bullet holes behind the dude and not the, sp the bullet tracer itself. So make sure you have that shit turned on, okay? So next up for general tips is to detense while playing. And that is just to like, just become aware of your, your hand. And if you're like gripping your mouse really tight and just relax it while you aim and get good at aiming while relaxed. And if you start messing up because of this, right? You start missing your shots because you're not tense. That's fine. That is fine. Make the mistakes. Your brain will fix them. Just detense and learn how to aim well while not like super gripping your hand. Leading into that, when I was talking about making mistakes, the next tip when it comes to training reflexive aim or any of these scenarios, ways to practice I was talking about, allow yourself to make mistakes, okay? Just let your gut initial reaction come out and then judge it after, right? If you make a mistake, that's fine. That's the whole point you're here. You learn through error reps. You learn through error reps. Don't try and force the correction. Just become aware of the errors and the corrections will come. And now for the final tip. If you're constantly in your own head when it comes to aim dueling and like you overthink things or you're very insecure in your aim. This is an issue I had for the longest time because I would just like, I just thought I was a bad aimer and it made me really scared to take fights and I'd overthink all the fights. People are gonna like, my teammates are gonna joke at me if I like whiff again. If you get in your own head, okay, this is how you calm down. And this can be applied to pretty much any emotional issue, emotional problems, mental game problems within this game and out of the game. This is a good skill I'm gonna teach, okay? It's called progressive muscle relaxation. I'm gonna teach you two techniques, okay? This is something I've struggled with like my whole life was anxiety, which eventually led up to full-blown depersonalization. And essentially depersonalization was when your body detaches from, your mind detaches from its body because there's just so much stress going on. And essentially I didn't know what relaxing felt like. I didn't have the skill of relaxing down. I couldn't relax. This technique of progressive muscle relaxation basically teaches you the motor skill of how to relax and detense. I'm not gonna walk you through the whole meditation, but essentially you wanna start at the, the, the top of your body and you start with your face and you just contract like each muscle section. So you start with the face, that looks fucking stupid, but you sit there and you squeeze your face muscles as hard as you can for five seconds and then you relax them and you let go of the tension and you want to notice the difference between tension, relaxation. And essentially when you contract something really hard for five seconds and then you let go, because it was over contracted, it will over relax that area of the muscles and it will release a lot of like subconscious tension that you have in your body that you don't realize with anxiety and just build up of stress. Like you will start subconsciously flexing, stabilizing muscles, small muscles, big muscles as stress builds up and this builds up tension. This is essentially what led up to my depersonalization was not knowing what relaxing feels like. You will get used to feeling what relaxation feels like and letting go of tension in your muscles by doing that first technique of progressive muscle relaxation but like every 10 to 15 minutes you can do this when anxiety comes up or just in general to like maintain your level of stability you want to just like like let go just like become like jelly and just like let everything flop for like three seconds just just do a full scan of your body like a quick scan and just detense 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 another thing too with this if you're in your own head all the time you want to acknowledge the emotions that you are experiencing and then do actions despite the emotions. So if you have fear because of the stimulus of a duel within CS, right? You're scared you're gonna get made fun of for taking a duel. Just learn to ex experience the fear, acknowledge it. If possible, relax through it, but don't give into it. Don't let the fear make you not take the fight. Take the fight anyways. Take the fight scared, do it scared. And if you can't relax through the emotion, you can't relax during it, relax afterwards. So you can apply this to anything, pretty much just learn how to relax and then learn the jelly technique to relax on command when needed and just maintain your stress levels. And then you want to acknowledge the emotions that you're feeling and don't give in to them, do the actions despite the emotion. And then if possible, relax through the stimulus that's making you scared. If not possible, do the stimulus, do the action through the stimulus anyways, acknowledge the emotion and try to calm down afterwards. And eventually your brain will re rewire itself to not be scared. So if you have struggle with getting your own head when it comes to aim duels, do everything I just told you and you will get over this very quickly. You will be surprised and you will feel better in life. This is like a thing that works for everything, right? So that's why I always talk about mental game stuff. It helps you outside the game. It helps you in the game, bro. I swear to God.